Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Yo, B. <laughs> My lights are something this morning. Okay, there we go. I was like, I feel illuminated. I'm already not that dark, and so extra light makes me look extra light. Good morning, ladies. I see y'all coming in, fellas. Come on in here. Good morning. Good morning. Hey, Tanisha. Oh. I don't know. Tanisha, I want to know why you haven't been to a pillow talk. Tamara, I'm putting her on blast. Tanisha. Hmm. Missy. Good morning, Chala. Good morning, Wana. Hey, Wana, I miss you. Good morning, Jessica. Hey, Gary Green, I see you in the house. Cousin Sonia, y'all rolling in? Come on. Get on in there. Good on. Good morning. Good morning, Yobi. <laughs> so, Yobi, like, man, man. Good morning. Good morning. How y'all doing this morning? Good morning. Um, <laughs> you did come to the second. That, that was a year ago. We on a whole nother year. You need. We need you here this year. Tamara, I'm har harassing your sister. Good morning. Good morning. How y'all doing? Good morning. Good morning. Y'all. Hey, Casey, y'all. I know, Chala, I got to harass her this morning. I need to harass somebody this morning. I'm in a good mood, so when I'm in a good mood, I need to harass. Somebody needs to be harassed this morning. I wanted to wake my kids up, but I just didn't want them up during Coffee and Conversation, so I didn't want to harass them. Good morning. Welcome to Coffee and Conversations. If this is your very first time logging on, I am Lakeisha Johnson, your host or your guest for today. And um, no, I understand that totally. I understand basketball season. We are in basketball season in the house, and I... <laughs> Tamara, she the perfect, Tamara, I know she's the perfect candidate because she always gets some picture of you and posts it on Facebook. I can't wait till we catch her. I'll help you get her. I ain't worried about it. I'll I ain't scared. I'll help you get her. Welcome to Coffee and Conversations. Um, of course, I'm wearing my Coffee and Conversations blink. Hey, my coffee mug today, I don't, I don't know if you know I really collect coffee mugs. I'm going to put a picture out of my cabinet full of coffee mugs. This one is my Jer Jeremiah 29 and 11, and it just simply says, for I know the plans that I have for you. I love God because guess what? He has already planned out what he has for us, plans to prosper us, plans to harm us, plans to give us hope, and plans to give you a future. God has already said that about you. Did you know that? Did you know God has already said, guess what? You're here. You're born. You're born on purpose, and I have a plan. I have a destiny. I have a final destination for you. One, your final destination is in heaven. Two, that, that's why Jesus came. That within itself is enough to make you mm, 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 mm. shout. That's the first thing. That's your final destination, heaven. And then God said, guess what? I uniquely designed you in such a way, in such a way for you to bring me glory all the days of your life. So stop second guessing whether or not I love you, whether or not I have purpose purpose for you. I have purpose for you. I love you. I designed you for this specific thing. And what I'm waiting on you to do is I'm just waiting on you to connect to me. 
I'm waiting on you to connect to me so that we can get moving in this thing. Did you guys know that? Some of you, God is just waiting on you. He's sitting there like, you're making this more complicated than you need to be. You're stressing yourself out. And if I'm not stressed out, why should you be stressed out? Like, why would you be stressed out if I'm not stressed out? And that's what God is saying. He said, I'm looking to do a new thing in you. I'm looking for our partnership, our divine partnership for the forces to collide. Because can I tell you something? When the force of God or the hand of God is on your life, man, there is absolutely nothing, no devil in hell, no spirit, no assignment, no person can, can come against anything that the Lord is trying to do for you. But I do know this. You have to receive it in your heart. You have to conceive. You have to conceive in your heart and believe without a doubt. You know what? God has a plan for me. Can I tell you some of your hindrances? Some of your hindrances are because you really haven't received the word of God in your heart. You really haven't received that God has the best for you. You're second guessing. You're trying to figure out if God is mad at you about something. You're still thinking about something you did from two years, five years, 10 years ago. And the Lord is like, I'm not into five and 10 years. I'm in today. We serve a God that's a right now God. He's a today God. Like he's a today God. That's why it says he loads you with daily benefits. That's why the model prayer, our father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. You should be talking to God about your daily assignments, your daily breads, and your daily benefits, not the things that are from 10 years ago. If you 10, if you two, five, 10 years back there in your past, do you know you two, five, 10 years stuck? If you're two, five, 10 years back there in your past, then you are two, five, 10 years stuck. You're stuck somewhere. Anytime you're holding on to something in your past, you're stuck in that moment. And so then you don't have the operating things that you need inside of you to move to your future. I give you examples from my past, right? Because I want you to learn from the things that I've been through. I want you to know that this thing that I'm walking out is really real. But I don't spend a, a lot of time thinking about what I used to be. And I can't because if I spent a lot of time thinking about what I used to be, I've become imprisoned by that moment. Yep. It's cool to revisit. Yep. It's cool to remember how you grew from it, but it is absolutely not okay for you to spend all this time connected to what's wrong with your past, man, your past over with. And if you got anybody in your life that constantly wants to remind you of your past, those are really the people that you probably need to give the deuces to. Those are the people that probably need to get the peace sign. And the reason why is because nobody gets to be around you. And I don't let anybody connected to me sit and tell me, I'm going to tell you about what you used to do. No, I'm going to tell you about what I'm doing now because the God that I serve rewrote my story. Like he already had the story and I decided to be a part of the script and we rewrote what was going on. See, a lot of y'all think you in prison to just one path and the Lord is simply saying to you, you know what? Nope. Let's come on on this thing. Let's change this thing. Let's rewrite this story so that we can go on and I can get the greater glory out of your life. Don't know why I needed to say that, but that was for someone watching now, let me pray so that we can get started for today. Father God, we thank you. Father, for this day, we thank you for your grace. We thank you for your mercy. We thank you for your love. We thank you for this word, Father God, that you have divinely given us, Father God, to encourage us, to give us hope, Father God. We we thank you, Father God, for the divine assignments in our life, Lord God. We thank you, Father God, that you are teaching us about the posture in our heart. Holy Spirit, we ask that you invade this word today, that you go before us, Lord God. Shehoro buko shiara mama ke that there is a divine alignment father god right now supernaturally we thank you father god that the promises of god are yes and amen lord god and we thank you father god for a right now season in our lives bless the people this morning let the word not fall on deaf ears let it be implanted in their hearts so that they're able to go and multiply the kingdom for your glory alone let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, you are my strength and you are my redeemer. In Jesus' name, amen, 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 amen. Amen, amen. Hey, can I tell you something? And I'm serious. Don't ever think you're getting too much word. 
Don't ever think you're getting too much work. I'm going to tell you the, the assignment of the enemy. He'll make you think that you're spiritually somewhere and you'll back up on your study time and you'll back up on your devotional time because you think you have enough word planted in you. And so then you take off and you go into this place or this tangent or this thing and you think you're riding this supernatural high. But I need to explain something to you. When the word is richly departed in you, it creates a seed in you. Some of those seeds come Come up now. Some of those seeds come up later. Some of the things, some of the word that needs to get in you is for um, a later season. And what I mean by that is so when the enemy comes in like a flood, the Lord holds up a standard and then the standard is in the word. So don't ever think that you're in a position that you've got enough word in you that you don't pick up your sword or your Bible daily and you eat at his table. You better daily eat at his table because the intensity of the warfare will come and it'll make you think that everything you thought you knew really isn't what you knew. So don't get comfortable with yourself and comfortable with the word where you're in a position or a situation where you're not eating your word daily. You should be eating the word daily. You should be in your word every day, in the morning, in the night, line upon line, precept, time with him, because this is how you're going to make smoother transitions. This is how when the enemy begins to come in, right? When the enemy begins to come in, then the word will bubble up in you and keep you from being depressed or downtrodden or sad. I've seen seasons. I've seen seasons in my life, right? I've seen seasons in my life where I've watched the word of God. I've watched the word of God as it was built up in me where something may have impacted me longer, like something may have impacted me longer. The the word of God got in me in such a way that it just began to dis- disappetate or whatever was trying to come against me moves quickly. But that's because I had girded myself with truth. That's what it means in Ephesians 6 when it tells you to gird yourself with truth. The, my belt, my girding of my truth was so intense that the enemy couldn't present a situation to me that did not line up with the word. So don't ever think that you're in a place where, and I'm not talking about that one little scripture verse that comes up on your Bible app. That one little scripture verse that comes up on your Bible app, that's cool. But you need a daily plan, a daily time with God, a daily ritual that you establish with God. Um, As a matter of fact, my daily ritual, if we're going to talk about our heart, the posture of our heart, and how to combat anything from getting in our heart, we've been on the posture of our heart all week, then you have to establish Mm, This is good. Thank you, Holy Spirit. You have to establish a daily ritual with God. So what is your daily ritual with God? For example, my daily ritual with God is when I first wake up in the morning, I start thanking him. First of all, I thank him even in my bed. I start thanking him for waking me up. I start thanking him for my day. That's part of my daily ritual. And then I have a daily devotional that I read for myself. There's a daily devotional that I read for myself. So I open right now, the devotional I'm reading is 90 days of supernatural prayer, right? So I open up my 90 days of supernatural prayer. I read that that devotional for myself and then I confess the prayer at the end of myself. After that, I have four other things that I confess over myself daily. So I go into my daily confessions, right? I'm just, I'm helping you. I I think this is going to help someone how to guard their heart or how to guard what goes in their heart. So these are the things that I do first. I do those so quickly and I do those so first. First, because for me, those are those are the things that keep me solid even before we get into this word together. And so if we're going to really protect or we're going to make sure what the posture of our heart looks like, you have to establish a daily ritual. So what does your daily ritual, and I'm not talking about a ritual in the standpoint that it becomes religious, right? Thank you. You're welcome, Kim. Okay. That makes, it makes sense now. You're welcome. Um, um, I'm not talking about the ritual in a way that it looks religious. I'm talking about what does your relationship look like with God in the morning? How have you been establishing your relationship with him so that we do guard the posture in your heart? So you do not have judgment so that your heart not hardened. The word is what's going to keep your heart from being hardened. The word is what's going to keep you from 
um, your time with God, your relationship with God. And so after I do the things that I confess over myself, I confess over relationships because those things are important. The other things that I confess over myself daily, then I get up and I serve Satan notes. I serve him notice and I get up and I begin to plead, plead the blood of Jesus over the day because there is nothing, there is nothing that comes against the blood of Jesus. And so I go and I start pleading the blood of Jesus over the day. I simply say to him, Lord, the blood of Jesus over this day, over my house, over my mind, over my finances. I'm holding the standard of the blood of Jesus around my home, over my individuals that come on coffee and conversation, over my over my prayer life, over my relationship, over my ministry, over my nonprofit. And I just begin to put the blood of Jesus over absolutely everything I'm attached to, over my children's school, over my church over my pastors i'm commanding and holding the standard i'm pleading the blood of jesus over my grandmother over my mother over my family members over their salvation i'm just taking authority in the blood and i serve the devil notice over my physical body over my mental mind i take authority and i put the blood of jesus absolutely everywhere, over my car, over everything. I'm holding the standard because I began to understand that there is absolutely nothing that can penetrate the blood of Jesus. So the blood of Jesus becomes my fortress that I begin to put up around myself. He loads me with daily benefits. That means the benefits of the blood. So after that, I'm, I'm telling you the blood, the blood, I, I plead the blood of Jesus over you guys daily over our time together so that nothing can get into this conversation and confuse you or make you think anything is going on here less than the Holy Spirit. So after I take authority in the blood of Jesus, right? After I take authority in the blood of Jesus, I'm going to tell you something. I'm real goofy. <laughs> And so my times in the morning with God, goofy. That's why I'm saying God has to have a relationship. Like I'm in here praising him and my praise and worship is like real. Mm. Like this morning when I was praise, like when I was praising and worshiping him this morning, I was acting like I was directing the choir and I was just like, you're amazing. And I'm talking about, I was rocking it out with him. That's why I'm telling you it's about your personal relationship with God, because I know I was created in his image. Right. And so this morning I was acting like I was directing the choir. I'm talking about me and this choir was getting down and we were singing. You're so amazing to God. Like that I'm getting it too. And I'm rocking like, and then we went into fair praise and I threw my hands up in the air that could, because he deserves my worship. It says enter into his gates with thanksgiving and enter into his courts with praise, right? So I'm in his courts and I'm praising him. I'm this morning, I'm the choir director. And that was my praise time with him, right? That was my praise time with him. I want to read this to you. It says, it says Ephesians 6 and 10, finally be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power, put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. I did a whole series on this. I did a whole series. It says for our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of the dark world and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Therefore, put on the full armor of God so that when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground. And after you have done everything to stand, stand firm then with the belt of truth, but around your waist with the breastplate of righteousness in place and with your feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. In addition to all this, take up the shield of faith, which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one, the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God and pray in the spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests with this in mind, be alert and keep on praying for the Lord's people and then pray for me. So I put on the full armor of God through using these things. My praise is my weapon. Those are my spirit, the sword of the spirit. And then I also begin to pray in tongues because praying in tongues is my heavenly language and my conversation between God and I, and it edifies me and it builds me up. So I also pray in tongues. And then the last thing that I do, even before I log on, to coffee and conversations, I lay down in the floor out of reverence to God and I give him my day. Like I lay down in the floor out of reverence to God and I give him my day. And I just simply say, Lord, I cast all my cares on you because you care for me. I cast and I lay everything that I'm that's on my heart, every desire of my heart. I have this thing where I just push him, right? 
I push everything towards him and I say, here are my, here's my children, here's my ministry, here's coffee and conversation, here's pillow talk, here's my for-profit, Yo Girl Incorporated, here's my non-profit sickle cell support services, here are all my children, here's my hope, here's my future, here's my mom. Every concern that I have, I lay on the floor and I push it. I do this, I do this physical thing where I show my hands and I just, I'm pushing it all to you. I'm laying this at the feet of Jesus and I'm asking you to direct and guide this today. I'm telling you, I don't, I don't have the capacity or strength because Zechariah 4 and 6 says not by might not by power but by my spirit says the Lord of hosts I don't have the power or the strength to do any of this I'm laying absolutely all of this at your feet this morning I'm giving this to you today because I've begun to figure out that you're absolutely bigger than anything that I have I'm thanking you for the resources for everything I'm thank you for the resources for coffee and conversation for pillow talk for every area of my ministry I just lay it all at his feet and I release these things to you because you gave them to me and they don't belong to you anyway. And I'm just waiting and excited for you. And then guess what I do? I, I put on a spirit of expectancy and the Lord told me something. He said, you cannot just put yourself in a position to pray. Then you need to put yourself in a position to receive. And so my new thing that I added today was, Lord, I receive absolutely everything you have for me. I thank you for loading me with that. I receive your daily benefits today. I receive your favor today. I receive your supernatural increase. I receive your promotion today. I receive absolutely I need to everything that I need to receive for you. And then I simply ask him, Lord, what is it that you need to say to me today? What is it that you need to say to me? Holy Spirit, what do you need to talk to me about? You said that you would guide me in all things. You said that you would teach me all things. You said you wouldn't leave me out there. So Lord, what is it you need to say to me today? How do you guide me today? And what do I need from you today, right? I need today. That's that's the personal relationship he desires to have. And then it's a, a time of getting quiet. And then even after we rightly divide and get in the word for coffee and conversations, I shut coffee and conversations down and I don't move. I used to talk to my friends and then the Lord showed me something. He said, no, I still, even after coffee and conversations is over with, I still need time to be able to talk to you. And so I shut coffee and conversations down. I put my praise and worship on and I just thank him for what he did for us for coffee and conversations. Thank you, Lord, for visiting us. Thank you for a word of knowledge or whatever happened in coffee and conversations. I shut it down and I begin to pray and I begin to praise and I begin to worship him. And then he begins to restore my spirit because whether you know it or not, every time I teach and minister to you, I pour out of my spirit, right? You don't ever want me teaching and pouring out of my flesh. I pour out of my spirit. And so I pour out of my spirit. And when I'm pouring out of my spirit to you, I need something poured back into my spirit. And so the time afterwards is when he begins to pour back into my spirit and he begins to restore me and he begins to show me the things and gives me the desires. And I always, I didn't always, I'm telling you, I didn't always, I didn't always, but I always make sure I keep something around me to write. I always make sure I keep something around me to write. I keep a prayer book around me. And I guess today, Jess, we're calling these strategies, t strategies for the posture of your heart. These are the strategies for the posture of your heart. I always keep something to write because something will come up your spirit. That something in that sweet, quiet, still moment, that something is not you, that something is probably God. And so as he's speaking to you, you want to write it down because I'm going to tell you something. I'm not saying God that doesn't ever repeat himself, but I'm going to tell you he's not obligated to repeat to you absolutely anything. And so these are the strategies I use, right, that I use to protect the posture in my heart. And then I am learning my prayer life at a different level. I'm learning to intercede at a different level, but I'm also understanding how powerful the prayers that I, prayers, my prayers I am. And then I'm, I'm every day adjusting the words that come out of my mouth. And I ask the Holy Spirit, show me how to adjust the words in my mouth so that they directly line with you. I want the words in my mouth to directly look like you and nothing else. No, they're like nothing else. And that is, that is how, that is how I guard my heart. And then I'm very, then I'm very, 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 very protective about who connects to me. And so one of the things that if you really want to change your energy, 
because we are spirit beings in our energy, then be very prayerful about who connects. I pray about every phone call, every conversation. Sometimes people will text me and I won't respond because I don't need to respond. Um, I have some, I have a personal situation going on right now that I need to probably be there. But if I'm going to go successfully do pillow talk, I had to guard myself against the situation so that I can rightfully deliver what needs to go on in pillow talk. That's why anytime someone is unstable around me, I will push them out my space until they get their stability back. And if I feel like they're too unstable, I may not let them back into my intimate space, period. Or I may choose the point of time for them to be in my intimate space because that is important for me for the assignment on my life for my relationship with Christ and for what I need to do that's the that's how I guard my heart and I hope that make that makes sense Isaiah 50 and 4 says the sovereign Lord has given me a well instructed tongue to know the word that sustains the weary he wakens me morning by morning he wakens my ear to listen like one being instructed When we were at Bible study, at the kickback Bible study, I told all the women there, the first 45 minutes of your day is when you are most heightened spiritually. The very first 45 minutes of your day is when you are, when you're in. And I'm going to tell you something, actually between four and five in the morning, there is something that happens in the spiritual atmosphere like never before. There's something that happens between four and five in the morning in the spiritual atmosphere. I haven't figured out why, but I'm telling you, there is such a spiritual activity between four and five. So if you really ever want to experience God like never before, I'll challenge you to get up between four and five in the morning. Put your ear, put in your praise and worship and get before the Lord and let him lead in God that time. And I I promise you, there's some spiritual activity. There'll be some things downloaded in you. But if we're going to put ourselves in the position to protect the posture of your heart. See, it's not enough for you to just have scripture memorized. The Lord says, I don't want you just listening to me. What I want you to turn around is do and do what I'm telling you to do. I want to see the word in your action. And if you want a well-instructed, learned tongue, and you want to protect the posture of your heart, and you want to make sure you're always right standing with God, then you've got to, dis- you've got to establish a strategy for yourself in the morning so that you put yourself in the position. You cannot, you cannot skip studying. You cannot, you, I even watch the word. So that's another part of my strategy. I have something where I watch, I put things in my spirit, in my ear and my eye gate. I keep praise and worship. Now, let me tell you something. After I've girded myself with truth, my day goes on to be very regular. Um, sometimes if I'm in a fast season, I may just listen to praise and worship all day long. Right. Um, but like when I get into and like before um, I go into a session before I minister people, I'm very pure about what goes in my spirit. Now, tomorrow after pillow talk, I'm probably going to be listening to something else. Right. <laughs> but beforehand, I saturate myself so that I'm in his presence and so that we're divinely lined and I'm hearing from him this way and I'm hearing from him this way. But that I, I just the Holy Spirit, I, that isn't even what I was going to talk about this morning. So I know that was Holy Holy Spirit led for us to develop a strategy. You got to have a strategy so that you can watch what's in your heart so that you can see what goes before you and ask the Lord what word. Don't just listen to any word because some of y'all listen to stuff to get you hyped up. You want a hyped up word, right? If I'm going to walk in true prophecy and I'm going to walk in true ministry, everything I give you is not going to be a hyped up word to make you feel good. If I'm true to this, then I should be giving you strategies and things that are going to make you successful, things that are going to challenge your walk, things that are going to help prune you, things that are going to help put you in a different place so that you become absolutely everything that you're supposed to do in Christ. Because a lot of times we've been walking in, in bad habitual things. We've been walking in bad habitual things, things that are out of habit, that have absolutely nothing to do with our relationship again with Christ, like our relationship with Christ. The things that I've given you today are just some foundational principles of things that I use that are the strategies that work for me to strengthen my relationship with God in the intimacy. And then I talk to God, like I talk to God, I'm like, man, 
And he comes back and he's like, Lakeisha, like I can feel God sometimes talk to me in such a way. And then also understanding how you sense God. We all sense God differently. Some of you are, some of you are hearers. Some of you see God. Some of you um, feel the presence of God. Some of you taste God. Like there are senses to God and how we feel God. When you're doing this, you'll understand how the Lord speaks to you. Some of you will simply just say, Lord, give me a word from your Bible and he'll drop a scripture into your presence. And so don't feel bad because I feel God in here. That's where he is. I say, I always say my baby left or, um, my, I feel God in here. God, I feel him in my midsection, right? That's, he talks to me too, but I feel him in my midsection. That's how I know he's leading me into something. It, he, he, there's something that stirs up in the inside. And when my insides are stirred up, that's when I know, that's how I know to connect to people. That's how I know, um, what I'm supposed to be doing. That's how I know he, and he talks to me too, but I get him in that. That's, those are the strategies that are going to guard heart, judgment, um, pride, fear, a hardened heart. If you really are tired and you really want to see yourself elevate, if you really want to see yourself elevate in Christ, if, you really want, if you're really tired of just enough in God and you want to experience the more of God, develop and get yourself a strategic plan and a process and stick to it. Make it your habits in the morning. Now, don't get, don't develop a plan and the Lord tries to lead you some way and you can't, like I've sat down for coffee and conversations. I've had all these notes. I've studied. I've said, this is what coffee and conversations. And then the spirit of the Lord will quicken me and say, no, he did that today. We're going into this direction. I want you to show them the strategies you use so that your heart stays clean and so that your heart stays clear and so that you stay in tune to me. Show them those strategies show them what that looks like for you on a daily basis and then it goes and then I also have a strategy for my sons so after I shut down um, I'll wake up, right? I'll wake up and I wake them up and then I get them up and usually some music playing, some word is playing and I just start talking to them about their day. Most mornings I fix them breakfast. It's important for me that they have a warm breakfast in the morning until they're tired and they'll be like, can we just eat cereal? So most morning I fix them bacon, eggs, biscuits, pancakes, whatever I'm feeling that morning. I fix them a breakfast and then we pray together. We don't leave the house until we pray together. We we pray together and then in the car we have an, a, a confession that we do and so I confess and they confess out their mouth and then I tell them something every day before they get out the car I tell them you need to be light you need to be love and you need to lead by example you need to remember who you are and whose you are you lead the class you you separate yourself you lead the class you're the person that's light. You're the person that's love. You're the responsible person. I don't leave that on their teacher. I leave that on them. And I say, do you understand? And they say, yes, that's fine. Do not forget whose you are and do not forget who I am and who you are tied to. And that is our ritual and our strategy every morning. And I'm talking about, I can pull up to that school and we don't run late and I don't allow them to leave the car until I say and speak those things. I have the power and authority to speak in their life. And I do this in such a way so that if something is happening, if something happens at school, they know one time my son was in class and a teacher was speaking over him. She had made a statement and she had said to him, most of y'all not going most of y'all not going to be ready for 6th grade. Most of y'all not going to do well. She had spoke that over him. He had enough word in him to rise up and shut down what he was saying in his mind. And he came home and he said she started speaking over us and I started just in my mind combating what she was saying. Like combat, bat, combating what she was saying in my mind. That's it, Hilda. That's it. Committing our thoughts, purpose to stay focused and have a good plan for him. If you will do that, that's how you're going to experience the victory. I just gave you a strategy. Ask the Holy Spirit to fine tune the strategy I showed you for your own. That's how I kingdom win. And it isn't always perfect. And some days I don't feel like it. But how I kingdom win, 
how I win in the kingdom, how I push past principalities, how I grow daily is by putting these strategies. Can I tell you something? Every successful mil millionaire has a strategic plan. They're creatures of habit. They have rituals. Mary Kay Ash, the founder of Mary Kay, every day got up every morning and wrote six, right? Wrote six tasks that she would treat. Every master plan, every person, every person has a strategy. That's why it says, I fought Jeremiah 29 and 11, for I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, the plans to prosper you and not to harm you, the plans to give you hope in a future. He already has a strategic plan. He's just waiting on you to ask him to guide you and show you so that you can walk this thing out. It's kingdom, baby. It's kingdom. And I say that all the time. It's kingdom, baby. That's kingdom. That's why it says that will be done on earth. If your life doesn't look like heaven on earth, then you need to begin to ask him for the strategies so that you can begin to walk into the fullness of what he called you. God is not interested in you living a boring, dull life that is not full of his presence, that you cannot enjoy, that you cannot live to the fullest, that you're sad, that you keep cycling. That's why some of y'all keep cycling back into these periods of depression and these other things is because you don't have a strategy you stick to. You don't have a strategy you stick to. You go good for two, three days, then you fall off. You go good for two or three days and then you fall off. You, you go good for two or three days and then you fall off and you keep trying to figure out why won't things happen for me consistently. That's why I don't lie, allow inconsistent people in my life. Like if I feel like something is going inconsistent in my life after a while, I have to make a judgment call. Whether or not I'm going to allow this person to continue to be in my life because inconsistency breeds instability. If you're inconsistent in your study, your prayer time, your walk with God, it breeds instability. So then when the enemy comes in, you're all over the place. You're all over the place because you don't have the word that you're not stable in your time with God. So that's why you, you'll find all of a sudden something goes wrong and you're like, Lord, how did this happen? It's because you're inconsistent with your relationship with God. And in your inconsistencies with your relationship with God, you're causing instability in your environment. You're causing instability in your environment. It's almost schizophrenic. It's almost schizophrenic. It's almost like you're, you're, you're living dual lives. And can, so let me tell you something. You don't have to be perfect to be in a relationship with Christ. And I'm, I'm emphasizing this because this is for someone like this just rose up in my spirit. You don't have to be perfect in your relationship. Stop thinking that you got to fix yourself first, right? And then come to God, come to God. And then the word of God is going to fix you. Come to him and he's going to fix you. You don't need to fix yourself. You don't need to fix yourself. You don't need to work everything out before you come to God. Just get to God first. Get to God first. Get to him first. Stop worrying whether or not you got to be fixed. You got to be perfect. You're not going to be perfect. There's no perfect. I used to kill myself trying to be perfect. I used to think I couldn't come before God. No, get before him. He works it out. The word will work it out of you. The word, the time that you spend with him, the time that you deal with the word, it will work it out of you. Just become consistent in your relationship. I'm consistent in my relationships with my sisters, my relationships that are my sisters, my five, I have a five pack, my five pack, right? My five pack. We consistently talk to each other. We consistently love on each other. We're consistently involved in each other's life. We're consistently praying for each other. My five pack, we strong. We, we don't let gaps go in our relationship. We love on each other. We check each other, right? And, and but we, I stay consistent in those relationships. I had to learn that I'm stable in those relationships. I'm consistently involved in their relationships. We're consistently involved. My five pack, we consider them five. Can I tell you something? Those five can get to me when nobody else can. The five, the five I have, they know they can call me. My kids, my guy, my husband, and my five pack, my mama. And my siblings have direct access to me, but that's the consistency in our relationship. We've built up such a consistent relationship. And so anytime you're in unstable, if there's inconsistency in any relationship, there's going to breed stability, instability. That's why the enemy wants you to isolate from people you're wanting to be connected to. 
Hey, hoop love, we had to grow there. Sisterhood is strong. It's important. Relationships are important. God did not create us to be here by ourselves. So if you're experiencing instability in a relationship, it's probably because you guys are spending too much time being inconsistent. Like if there's some problems in your marriage, you're probably not consistent. If there's a problem with your kids, you're probably not consistent. If there's a problem in your business, you're probably not consistent. And anytime there's inconsistency, there's instability. There's inst. I know you know. I'm just saying there's instability. Anytime you're inconsistent, there's instability. Well, that's it for today. I hope that blessed or helped someone today. Like I hope what I shared today, these strategies to protect the posture in your heart, these strategies for you to overcome judgment, um, a harding heart, hate. All of those things that we dealt with and talked about when we talked about the posture of your heart. I hope what I share with you today, because those are just the strategies of what I use. When people ask me, they're like, you're so strong. I'm like, and I've been building these strategies for 15 years now. This is 15 years of building strategies. I'm just going to be real. These are 15 years and I've seen myself grow. I've seen myself grow within the last year. This has been 15 years of building strategies. 15 years. And it may not take you 15 years. I just wasn't always consistent. Now, over the last four years, I understand how important consistency is for me to be stable in the kingdom. To be stable. Melissa, you are not perfect. You cannot fix yourself. You just have to, that's it. Melissa, you got me high five in you. That's it, baby. You, you are not perfect. You cannot fix yourself. You just have to give yourself to Christ just as you are and trust him and see what he sees in me. That's it. Like, that's it. That's it. That's all it is. You don't have to come before God. Perfect. God isn't interested. He's going to work it out. The enemy will tell you, fix yourself first and then come to God. God is saying, come to me broken, disgusted, busted, speckled, striped, jacked up, sinful. Get to me. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Don't fix yourself because you may be fixing yourself over here and it doesn't even line up with the word. Come to me and I'll show you how to fix you. Come to me and I'll show you what this looks like. Come to me and I'll show you how to write. He said, come on, come, come to me. All that are heavy laden, come to me. That's what he said. All that are heavy laden, come to me. Come to me. And take your rest. All that are heavy laden, come to me and take your rest. See, I know a lot of scripture. I just can't always tell you it's, uh, the, where it exactly is. Come, um, It's Matthew 11 and 28. It says, come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. I will give you rest. That's Matthew 11 and 28. Come to me, all who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. He's going to give you rest. He wants to give you the rest. You don't have to get the rest to yourself. He will give you that rest. So stop trying to figure it out over here, right? Just come to him. Bring your heaviness. Bring your broken. He has the capacity to carry, to deal with whatever it is you have going on in your life. He's got the capacity to handle it. And so he's just waiting for you to bring it to him. He doesn't want you to try to fix it. He wants you to bring it and yourself to him and just simply say, you know what? I'm tired of spinning this wheel. I'm tired of being this hamster in this wheel and I'm getting absolutely nowhere. Hey, well, that's it for today. I am definitely over and out of time. I've been trying to stay at that 30 minute window. I'm so glad you guys supped with me this morning. I'm so glad that you guys are here with me this morning and we got to share coffee and conversation. You guys know what this is this weekend. It's Pillow Talk Texas and I am so, I've even had some late registrations come in. Some people that have come by and they're like, man, I don't want to miss this. Can I get in on the last part? And they've been getting in on the last part. I definitely, I am getting ready to pray for you guys. Um, I will definitely, um, pray that Andrea, give me just a second. I am praying for you guys and I'm going to just pray out of my heart. So if there's anything, drop it in the timeline. If there's anything that you need to pray prayer for, let us intercede and pray for you right now. Let's get in the gap for each other. 
And God doesn't hear unspoken prayer requests. He hears spoken prayer requests, right? He hears spoken prayer requests. So stop being afraid to speak your prayer request to us. Nobody is ever going to leave. Um, Andrea is praying. We're going to pray for Andrea's neighborhood, right? There are people breaking into our cars. We're going to pray for protection and safety. We're going to pray pray for, for I'm going to we're going to pray for your mom, right? We're going to pray for your mom. We'll definitely begin to pray for your mom. We're going to pray for Nania. We'll pray for Nania this morning. Um we're just going to ask the Holy Spirit to go into this prayer time. Um we're going to pray and we are definitely going to walk in the will of God. Hey, you guys log on to my website, LakeishaMJohnson.com. Subscribe to, some of you guys are still not subscribed to the YouTube channel. Subscribe to the YouTube channel, Coffee and Conversations. Turn your notifications on. Get on the YouTube channel because I'm going to start dropping all of those old messages. Um, Kedra, we're definitely going to pray for your heart. God does not desire for you to live with a hard heart. He wants you to experience life and love. And I'm Kedra, I, you know what? I'm going to do something for you specifically. I'm believing that my spirit, the spirit of love, the spirit of vulnerability and transparency flow into you right now in Jesus name, that you receive the love, compassion, and things that I have in me, the ability to let go. And for, I'm, I'm asking from a divine flow from my spirit to yours right now in the name of Jesus, from my spirit to yours right now in the name of Jesus, Kedra, that you receive that right now in Jesus name. And so my eyes are going to be open because I don't want to miss these prayers that are coming in, right? So I'm going to begin to pray and I just want you to enjoy. Father God, we thank you right now in the name of Jesus for you, who you are. You are the divine. You are the everything. You are our all in all. And if we all stand in agreement right now. You said where two or more are gathered in your name, that you are in the midst. So right now we stand in agreement and we pray for the safety and we declare safety in Andrea's neighborhood. We plead the blood of Jesus over her entire neighborhood and whatever the thief thought he was going to steal, let it be returned to everybody seven, seven times. Satan, we serve you. Notice you have no authority in that neighborhood. We put up and declare a hedge of protection around every house, every home, and anytime anyone desires to come into that neighborhood, Lord, that you shut it down, that they can't even enter that neighborhood, that the blood of Jesus, that the warrior angels are up and around, that there is safety in that neighborhood and that no one walks in fear right now in the name of Jesus. We are praying this morning for Petrina's mom, Lord God. We thank you, Father God, that she is sound of health in mind, spirit, body, and soul, that Miss Pearlie May understands that you were bruised for her iniquities and chastised for her peace and by her stripes you are already healed we take authority over her we take we stand in the gap for her lord god and we thank you father god we intercede that there is a renewing that every fiber t tissue and cell in her body goes in direct line right now in the name of jesus we pray for nania father god we thank you holy spirit that you are ministering to her right now in the name of jesus that you are going inside that you are infusing her that you are equipping her that you are giving her hope lord god right now in the name of Jesus, Lord God, that every cell, every fiber, and every tissue is aligning with the word of God and that she will be made whole spirit, soul, and body right now in Jesus' name. We pray for Vanessa's aunt. We know healing is a part of our benefit package. So we declare right now in the name of Jesus, by your stripes, she is already healed and whatever cure whatever it is she needs whatever satanic attack whatever ploy it is released from her right now in the name of jesus supernatural healing is coming to her right now in the name of jesus we thank you father god for Casey's heart that is free to love, that it's free to love, that it's free to receive the love that you have for her and that she will not, not go back any other way, but in love and in spirit and in truth and in life. We pray this morning for your B's daughter in the courtroom, that she will have favor, that she will have preferential treatment. Father God, you said that you would even bless our mistakes to prosper. We thank you that you go before her and that your judgment is the final verdict of whatever she needs in her life. We 
pray for her sister health. All that need healing, let healing come to them today in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Father God, that you draw Tamara unto you, Lord God. We thank you, Father God, that she no longer desires anything less than the standard that you have set for her life, that she will understand that she is the queen, that she is a princess in your kingdom, and that you desire and you want the very best for her, that she becomes solid, sold out, that you are king of kings, that you are Lord of lords. We thank you, and we cast down this spirit of strife in Hoof Love's family. We thank you, Father God, that they are bound in love, bound in your spirit, bound in your truth, bound in a way like none before. Lord God, you said, Father God, in your word that love takes precedent. So I supernatural, I speak a supernatural infusion of love that allows them to get above and beyond any of their differences. Right now, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for healing and restored health for Chala's husband this morning. We thank you, Father God, for making, for, for, for just the benefit package that he awakens this morning, restored, renewed, revitalized in the word of God. We thank you for healing for Hilda's husband this morning. We thank you, Father God, for healing for her mom. We thank you, Father God, right now in the name of Jesus, Father God, that everybody on here that desires Katrina to have a better relationship with God, Lord God, that they can have one, that they understand you just desire to sup. Give them boldness. Give them confidence, Lord God. Give them a cohesiveness that only comes from your word, Father God. And we pray for pillow talk today, Lord God. We thank you that every woman connects to us this Friday and this Saturday that their lives will never be the same. Yeshua, go before us. Lord God, go before us making our crooked places straight. Go before us leveling the mountains. Go before us, Lord God, picking up our valleries, Lord God, and let them know that you have called us by name. We thank you, Father God, right now in the name of Jesus, Lord God, that no person is confused by religion, Lord God, but that everybody desires a stronger relationship. Let them be stirred up. Stir up their gifts. Stir them up right now in the name of Jesus. Shannon, we bind your mind to the mind of Christ and we bind your will to the will of God. You can't, we don't want, we want you to have a relationship. We speak a relationship for you, to you, for God, not about religion, but about your relationship that you learn there is only one good Jew God, that the Holy Spirit and that the Lord, the Christ, the King of Kings invade your life and that you encounter him like never before. In the name of Jesus, we serve notice. Say not serve you notice. I cast down every spirit of depression every spirit of drought, every spirit of doubt, every spirit of fear, every spirit of worry. I command them to end today in the name of Jesus. I command and serve you notice. You have no authority over anybody under the sound of my voice. And I speak a release, a quick release over the people. Spirit of depression, spirit of heaviness, spirit of oppression, go now in the name of Jesus. And I release light, love, peace, joy, patience, goodness, faithfulness and self-control into every life under the sound of my voice right now in Jesus name. Nothing broken, nothing missing, only receiving you and the wholeness of who you are. Lord, let your kingdom come. Your will be done in the lives of these people in the mighty name of Jesus and let the church say, amen. Man, amen, amen. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, every tie to your past is broken. I prophetically respect that. You will no longer, I'm serving the enemy notice. You will no longer go back to anything in your past anymore in the name of Jesus. No longer. No longer, no longer will you revert to the past. No longer will you backtrack. No longer will you think about what you used to be. No longer will you be tied to old ways. I sever the ties of your past from your life right now in the name of Jesus. And I cover you in the blood of Jesus that you may be sound and you may be whole whole in the name of Jesus. Every tie to your past is broken off of you. It's severed. Now receive it in Jesus name. I receive the freedom from my past in the name of Jesus. In Jesus mighty name. Amen.
My God, I love y'all. If you didn't feel the power, if you didn't feel the power, if you didn't feel the power this morning, I don't know. Like that was, that was a power that came to this, this morning. There was a power to destroy yokes. There was a power to destroy depression. There was a power to destroy sickness. See, it ain't gotta be all hyped up. There was a power. There was a power to reset, reset, to restore you. There was a power that came this morning to make your crooked places straight. There was a power that released you from your past. There's a power that's healing. There's a power that's restoring. There's a power that's revitalizing. And there's a power that's renewing. May that power be unto you. Just receive it. Receive it. Lord, I receive everything that you have for me today. I receive everything that you have for me today. I receive every freedom that you have for me today. I receive every joy that you have for me today. I receive all the love that you have for me today. I receive every bit of favor that you have for me today. I receive it all for me today, right now, in the name of Jesus. Signed, sealed, and delivered. Baby, I'm yours. Just receive it today. Glory to your name, Father. We glorify you. We magnify you. We bless your holy name this morning. We bless your holy name. We bless you. We thank you, Lord God. We bless you. We bless you. We praise you. We magnify you. We receive it all today. Thank you. We thank you, Lord God. We thank you. We thank you. For my sister that was, I don't want to name her name, but my sister, for my sister that was at She Knows, for my sister that was at the Bible study the other night that said that she may be received safety. I'm pleading the blood of Jesus over you, that you are able, that he is providing a way of escape for you. You know who you are and that you will be safe, that no hurt, harm, or danger will come to you. I'm covering you in the blood of Jesus and everybody on here is stand in agreement that safety is coming to you, that you will be safe, that you will not be in fear and that no weapon formed against you shall prosper. I don't, I'm not putting your name out there. You were there. You know who I'm talking to everybody. I'm, I'm sealing you in the blood and I'm declaring safety over you right now in the name of Jesus. I thank you, Lord. Lord, thank you for the visitation. Thank you, Lord, for all that you're doing. I thank you for her safety. I thank you for my sister's safety right now. I'm covering her in the blood. I'm putting the hedge of protection up. No weapon formed against her shall prosper. I'm declaring, I'm standing in agreement because you said in your word, he who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide in the shadow of the Almighty. She abides in you and therefore she is safe in you and she won't be anything else. Say not serve you notice. You cannot come against her. You cannot not have her live in fear. You will not have her live in worry. She will be safe. She will come out of this thing safe, nothing broken and everything that the enemy tried to take from her, everything the Lord will restore it unto her seven times in Jesus name. Amen. Lord God, I love you. I bless you and I praise you and I magnify you and I thank you for this time. I do not take this gift, this time, and this ministry for granted. I love you and thank you. I love you guys. I love you so much. Let me get off here. We have got, Lord, Lord, I'm telling you, there is a safety coming to her. There is a protection coming to her. And I'm standing in the gap for her. That just rose up in my spirit. The blood of Jesus is in her and all around her and no weapon formed against her shall prosper. I'm standing in the gap and I'm double dog. I'm there daring the enemy to come near this one. I'm daring the enemy to come near this one. I'm daring him to. The word went forth. The Lord, Lord is going to do exactly what he's supposed to do for her in Jesus name. I dare him. I dare him to encroach on this one. The Lord is going to, everything that the enemy has planned against this woman of God, the, it's going to be reverted back on him. Not the per the enemy is going to pay back for every fear, every worry, everything. He's going to pay it back. He's going to redeem her time. He's going to restore her and she will walk in the fullness of what God called her to be. My God, I promise you she will. I promise you the word of the Lord is going forth on her behalf and on yours this morning. I love y'all. Let me get out of here. Let me get out of here. Let me get out of here. Hey, make sure you share this video with someone. Just drop it in their inbox. Put it on your timeline. Pin it to the top of your timeline. Let somebody get strategies. Let them get the word and let them get prayer. the prayers received. We thank you that every spirit that does not line up with the word cannot dwell in us. And we thank you for victory today in the name of Jesus like never before. I love y'all so much. I'm going to get off here. I need to get these boys up. I need to get them ready for school. 
school. We are headed to Texas. Y'all pray for my safety. Pray for my restoration. Pray for the fun. My best friend and I, Thelma and Louise, on this highway. We gangsters for heaven. Ain't that something? Um, and I'll see you, those ladies of you from Little Rock that are coming safe travels to you all. And I will see you guys shortly. Remember, there's no Saturday special edition in the morning. So for those of you guys, we'll see you guys back Monday at 5 a.m. I love you guys so much. Go be loved today. Let someone else experience love through you. I love you so, so much. Love, peace, and blessings.